Uh, we're going to kind of do this informal. We did this last year, and we really thought it worked out very well. Um, <clears throat> kind of off the cuff, we're going to, of course, we're sitting here after, you know, COVID and Ida. So we kind of want to get a, an overview of where you guys feel like we are. Um, from, from my perspective, you know, I really don't want to say anything too offensive. I work for both of these gentlemen, so there could be severe re repercussions because of this. So, um, but give, I, what I have noticed is this, and I'll, and I'll preface this. Uh, you know, as we, as we look at our state and, and Lake Charles and the two <coughs> hurricanes that hit over there, um, and then what, what has happened to us since really 2019 <laughs> with Barry and then several storms uh, in 2020, and then again, of course, Ida last year. Um, I, you know, I feel like it's amazing the amount of recovery that's going on in Terrebonne and Lafourche. Um, you know, you would you would think, uh, in some respects, to me, it feels like we're further along in a year than Lake Charles maybe is in two years. So, I think that's a testament to the urgency uh, that both of you guys uh, um, lead your office uh, in getting things done. So just we'll start with Archie. Archie, why don't you give us an update, an update where we are with Ida and the efforts. And we'll yeah, thanks, Mitch. And thanks, everybody, for, for being here today. You know, Mitch is right. I think when you look at what happened in southwest Louisiana uh, and then you look at what happened in Lafourche and Terrebonne, St. Charles, St. John, it, it's a testament to a couple of things. I think, one, it's a testament to our communities and the way we rebound. We don't have a lot of people waiting on the federal government to move in. And we pulled up our bootstraps. We helped our neighbors clean their yards and clear the streets. Uh, I think it's also a testament to our levy districts, and, and you're going to hear us talk a lot about that today. You know, Dwayne, Wendell, Reggie, Tony, Gordy, these guys who have put their blood, sweat, and tears into these levy systems, and we didn't have the water that we've had in the past. Um, it's always difficult to mitigate for the wind, and I think the building codes that the legislature put into effect, you know, after Katrina really helped from a, from a wind perspective. Uh, we saw a lot less damage on newer homes uh, than we would have seen if those building codes wouldn't have been adapted. But so I think we're really far advanced. We have probably about 99% of the debris picked up across Lafourche Parish. We've moved into the second phase of that, which is really some private property debris removal and then the demolitions. We have probably about 400 structures that have to come down because of damage to the storms that people have qualified for FEMA's program. They couldn't afford to take it down. They didn't have insurance, whatever the, the situation may be. And now we're really focused on, on the hardcore recovery. <coughs> about $231 million worth of public infrastructure damage. That's $44 million in pump stations and drainage, probably about $35 million in buildings. Uh, we have another 10 or 12 million in rec facilities and then about $28 million in debris pickup that we're on the hook for. So, you know, as, as we are, like all of you in your businesses and your personal lives, fighting with insurance, fighting with FEMA, trying to get every dollar we can to put all that back together in the hopes that if, if I had some wood up here, we knock on it, that we don't see another hurricane this year or in the next several years. Uh, and trying to get FEMA to really understand that, you know, hey, if, if you give us the money now and you speed this process up, um, it, it really helps mitigate for those future disasters, right? The better we build back today, um, the, the less damage we will hopefully see in the future. So I, I think we're really far ahead of the game, a lot further than I think any of us thought we would be, not only inside parish government, uh, but from an outside view as well. I did thank y'all for having me. Uh, you know, to reiterate what uh, Archie just said, you know, Temple Parish started about 17 years ago building their levee systems and uh, Thanks to Tony Alfred, Reggie Dupre, and, and the levy board, and the people of Tampa Parish taxing themselves. And of course, it proved it proved it in 2019, 20, 21, and of course, uh, in 21 was Ida. And uh, you know, Ida hit hit Fouchon and it skirted up between Terrebonne and, and Lafourche. And you know, uh, the people of Terrebonne and Lafourche were really resilient in their recovery efforts. I mean, we had electricity back to the people in Terrebonne Parish within 30 days. Waterworks, my, my hat's off to Mike so bad, that group and the Waterworks board, they came in and had water in as fast as we were getting electricity with Sleeker, Entergy, and um, we had substantial damage to our power plant. Our power plant is, uh, it's, uh, uh, we believe we gonna, uh, we, we've got FEMA where we want them to be to replace it. It's an 80 megawatt power plant, which we're, trying to talk them into go 100 megawatts for the future. And our grid system is about another $100 million. We're going to try to change the grid system. Remember, HOMA has a, its own power, and then uh, Sleek and Entergy pick up the rest of the parish. But we do go outside the parish. And so we've actually let the engineering contract out on the power plant to a local firm, GIS, and some other uh, electrical engineering firms. 
And then we recently uh, let out the uh, for a new courthouse. We are pushing for a new courthouse. Our courthouse annex is in bad shape. We, naturally, it's repaired, but it needs to be replaced. So we think we got a good choice there. You know, we got a good chance there, and everything is looking good. And FEMA has distributed approximately $202 million in individual assistance to the, to the, to the Terrebonne, uh, to, to the individual residents of Terrebonne Parish. The U.S. The U.S. Small Business Administration has issued approximately $161.8 million in low interest loans to the residents and another $13.6 million to businesses <coughs> in Terrebonne Parish. So like Archie, me and Archie talk a lot, you know, we've all pushed, uh, and also Matt Jewell in, uh, in, in St. Mary Parish, and uh, I mean, excuse me, in St. In St. Charles Parish, you know, we've worked together and really we got FEMA moving as quick as humanly possible, and that's, that's very difficult. So with that, I think our recovery efforts are moving along, and thanks, you know, to our levy system. We had more of a reverse head. We had water come to us at first, and then we had a reverse head where Archie and them got as much as a 14-foot surge, and the, the uh, LaFouche's levy system held up. Thank you. We'll, we'll stay here, and I'll just follow up. Y'all are kind of answering all my questions all at once, but uh, let me get it out of the way. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I, I intimately understand this being involved in what I do in terms of recovery, but I, I don't think people understand. You know, FEMA is a reimbursement system, so you guys have a disaster, or in the case of the last few years, we've had a bunch of FEMA recordable disasters, uh, Barry, uh, Delta, Zeta, Ida. Um, explain to everyone what that does to your actual budget. If you have something you have to respond to, you spend that money up on the front end and wait sometimes years before you get that money back. So you have to really be smart in how you execute, execute your recovery plan. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Well, we 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 borrowed fifty million dollars. We received twenty three million dollars to date, and which has been actually fat, quick for FEMA. So, you know, we, you know, I, you know, my hats off to my department heads, Candace Malden, my CFO, and, and Chris Pulaski, uh, head of zoning and planning, and, and all the rest of the department heads. We were able to hire the hire uh, consultants, engineers, and and get the paperwork. It's all about paperwork, and you know, our, you know, our, our, our gang got it in quick, and you know, it's a, it's a testament to, to their will to get us our money as quick as we can. You know, we like everyone else. We we still have a lot of money out there, and uh, we're we're pushing day to day to get it. Yeah, and you know, to, to, to Mitch's point, you know, it creates one big cluster from a, from a budget perspective, right? Because when you talk about how do you cash flow. $28 million in debris pickup, right? Because those guys are not going to wait forever to get their paychecks because they have to pay their subcontractors. Uh, and when you talk about, for us, you know, we have about a $103 million budget. Uh, and when you look at our audit from this year, the one finding we had in our audit was that we commingled too many funds because we had to pay the bills. You know, there was no way to tell DRC that, hey, guys, you got you to gotta wait probably, I don't know, let's say a year before I pay you your money. That, that, that doesn't really work. That doesn't work when you have, you know, probably seven different architectural and engineering design firms putting projects out to bid for your building so we can get roofs back on it. Those guys need to get paid so they can pay their employees as well. So it, it creates a struggle. You know, we did the same thing as Terrible and we bonded out about $120 million to help cash flow this stuff. Um, and it, it, what's, what's really neat is we figured out a way to, to tie it to our FEMA reimbursement. And Gore and I were having this discussion last week. You know, our first payments aren't due for about two or three years. Um, and then it's based on whatever your projected reimbursement rate is from FEMA. So the debt service on this is going to be covered in a very weird way. We may make you know, one lump $15 million payment in year three, and then we may not pay them in year four because we're still waiting for reimbursement. So our, our bonding attorneys got very creative when it came to doing that so we can keep that cash flow perspective without having to tap into all the other restricted funds that we have so we can still do the stuff that we need to work on, you know, things like improvements to recreation, improvements to buildings, things like that. And, and that, you know, I mean, I think that Gordon mentioned, you know, he got about half of his FEMA reimbursement back in a year. That's actually unbelievable. I mean, Katrina reimbursements went on for eight, nine, ten years before they were paid back. So, I mean, I think there has been some improvement. Uh, however, it's impossible, you know, for a parish president to run a parish 
when he's got to take fifty million dollars out of his budget right away. You know, and, and that was a conversation we, we had when Secretary Mayorkas was here a couple weeks ago. So he's the guy in charge of in charge of FEMA. We said, you know, just because New Orleans screwed the pooch years ago and, and spent their money the wrong way and, and, and did bad things with it, the good shouldn't always have to suffer for the bad. So if we have a, an engineer or architect saying, hey guys, you got this pump station that was damaged in the hurricane. This is how much damage you have. It's $10 million to replace it. Then cut me a check for that $90 million and then come audit me next year once it's done. And if I screwed up, then, then make me pay it back. But to have us wait for three or four years to get these reimbursements is, is, is ridiculous in a lot of cases. Well, you, you mentioned pump stations. I know it's not on our sheet, but I'm going to hit you off the cuff. Both of you guys have been uh, extremely aggressive in, in updating your pumping system. Uh, Lafouche, you know, traditionally is known for having a very old system. Uh, and Gordy, um, you know, here in Terrebonne, we've got a lot of new pump stations that have come online under your administration. Can you talk about some of that and how they performed during the storms and how they're performing now? You know, we've had a lot of rain over the last couple of months, just in general. Yeah, so things overall for us went really well. We have, you know, $44 million in drainage infrastructure damage to our pump stations. All of them are still working in some way, shape, or form. Now, there's probably 10 of them that could probably fall in the canal at any given moment when they're running, uh, which is a scary thought going into another hurricane season or just another rainy season. But that's just the reality of life as we, again, fight with FEMA to, to, to rebuild those things and, and go through the mechanisms to be able to get reimbursed, right? It takes time to design these things. But the one thing, and, and i got to give credit to Dylan and, and, and Mitch and our team and our department heads and, and even the engineers that we work with are making us rethink how we do drainage infrastructure in Lafourche. You know, for a lot of years, we would go to an engineer and say, hey, we got, we got two and a half million bucks to build this pump station, right? And the engineer would just drop the, drop the pump housing in the ground and we'd start pumping water for two and a half million dollars because that was all we could afford. But now we're actually looking at hydraulic standards, right? And I, and I kind of picked this up from, from, from President Dove. You know, we're, we're really looking at ways to improve the efficiency of pumping so that we can try to take the 86 pump stations that we have across the Fouche Parish and maybe consolidate it down to 60. Right? We're doing bigger, better pump stations that are costing us more up front, but we're moving water more efficiently and they'll last longer into the future. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know, I took, I took office uh, seven, right at seven years ago and because one of my big programs was adding pumps as well as uh, replacing some old pumps and today we've, ad we've added, we've got 30, 30 pumps that were added, 24 completely, completely, that's completed. We have six either under construction, under engineering, but fully funded. We, uh, we've, got, we've, we've installed new, new pump, pump stations from 66 inches, which is tall as a man, to 48 to 36 to, to uh, 42 inch to 24 inch and then some as small as 12 inches and our, our program has been very successful we've we funded most a lot of it the state has funded some with us we've got we've got a grant on one big pump station Bob Black 10 million dollar grant which we just received the permit from the Corps so that's going to give us our third 1,000 CFS on a Chacahula Basin and that's going to give us three 1,000 CFS. And, uh, you know, when we took office, all the, you have, you have about 95 pump stations in Terrebonne Parish. By 24, were already electric existing, and none of them had backup generators. So when you'd have a hurricane, electricity was out. People would flood during, after, and for quite a while. So we did, we did put, we, we had to rewire the buildings because it, none of them even had transfer switches. So, you know, we put 24 pumps, so our system showed after Ida, it rained for, if you, for you, if all you were here, it, it rained almost every day solid, and we, we, we had no flood, no reported flooding, except some reverse head that experienced down shore, and that was due to the reverse head trying to get to the flood, through the floodgate. So, very successful system. We, we got a few, few pump stations to finish up, but it was, very, very successful, and I want to thank, of course, my council and the people of Terrebonne Parish because it was their money it cost the state of Louisiana. What? I mean, that's amazing. 100, 170 plus pumps over two parishes. That means it's affecting everybody's lives every single day. If you live down here, uh, those things matter. So it, it's important to pay attention to that. Some, some people don't realize that. And, and, you know, some of these pumping stations have been around forever. Uh, I mean, even as old as President Dove. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I told him I'd get him a little bit. 
Um, all right, so, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, uh, we've, we've been talking a lot lately about Morganza and finally having federal funding. Uh, we were able to tap into infrastructure money to get funding for Morganza. I don't want to talk about Morganza, but, but what recovery monies do you guys have in coming to Terrebonne and Lafourche Parish, and, and what do you guys have planned for that recovery money? Yeah, so we've done a lot of work uh, through the infrastructure bill that President Biden put out about three weeks ago. Um, give a shout out to my girl Laura in the back. We got a she, she told me I had to. Uh, we got a, we got a raise grant uh, for the new Valentine Pontoon Bridge. Uh, so it's a bridge that's been out of commission for probably about seven years. Uh, we started the process with uh, the late Representative Reggie Bagla had secured a, a million dollar commitment from Secretary Wilson over at DOTD. Uh, and we, we, the parish then bonded out some dollars to help build the bridge. Luckily, we were able to claw back about 2.6 million of that, which is gonna allow us to do some other projects because of that raise grant. And you're gonna see more and more of that infrastructure stuff come down. You know, we were on a call this morning with Secretary Wilson, uh, where they're tapping into some of those dollars to help us with our off-system bridge program. So you can see a lot of those local bridges uh, across Lafouche that are gonna start to get, get done. You know, we're gonna take these old timber pile structures out and either move to more box culverts and move water a little bit more efficiently, efficiently and are stronger, uh, or are you going to see us go with, with concrete pile structures, which will last, again, uh, we'll, we'll probably outlive me, and I'm the, the youngest guy up here. So um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a great way to, to, to get more projects into the bank. Uh, and then I think when you look at not only what we're doing through FEMA uh, on the LaFou side, but just all the grant opportunities. You know, last year we secured, and I know Christy's in the room, our grants and economic development director, we secured over $29 million in federal grants. It's $29 million that we didn't have to take your local tax dollars to go do stuff with. You know, we were able to secure that money from, from a whole lot of different spots. And it's done everything from pump stations to recreational activities to turf and fields uh, and, and the roads and bridges. So we're, we're doing a lot of positive work. Yeah, well, you know, same thing as uh, what Archie's talking about. You know, look, we recently received the $10 billion grant, which I just said for the pump station, uh, 1,000 CFS and in Gibson. And, uh, that's actually some old uh, uh, HM uh, GP money from from one of the hurricanes way back when that we just got to. The money will, will be coming in for quite a few years, and and, and we've got tens of millions of dollars in, in grants. And the big thing now is to go after the FEMA money that's out there. The CDBG monies have not been released yet. That's where there's going to be a big, big. Uh, 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 pot of money, and like I said, we, we have to replace a pump, a power plant, and a uh, and a uh, grid system, which is probably going to be two hundred million dollars for those two, because our power plant was totally destroyed. Right now, we're building a portable power station on Barrow Street. When you go past Barrow, you'll see them putting it up back there, and uh, that's a Greco's building. It costs FEMA's going to pay for it. But that's costing us $1.5 $1 million a month that we're going to end up paying for the next three years by the time we build a power plant. Because the investment of that power plant in Morgan City under LEAP 1 does not help Terrebonne Parish any. And, and uh, we've been paying $4.4 million a year on that, and it's a $130 million payoff. So that pump, that, that electric generating system doesn't help us whatsoever. So it's useless to us. And so we had to go out and put a put a portable uh, a, a Greco generating system so we can, if, if we have an abundance of uh, demand, if we don't have this system in, in uh, place, in, in, in uh, the, the city of Homa, we will be doing brownouts. And other words, a, brown, a blackout is complete loss of transmission to your area. A brownout is when you have to turn off areas because you don't have you don't have the power demand to, to, to cover it. So we're actually, like I said, it's 1.5 million a year, and but we're moving forward with that. So that's some money I'm not even talking about right here that we're moving forward with. And we should have that online in about three weeks. So we're just hoping we don't get a demand. And also you have to regulate your voltage in Terrebonne Parish through the Homer substation, which is another reason you have to have a workable power plant. So you, you mentioned CDBG, uh, and, and y'all have not received those funds. What's, what's the time frame or outlook for, for that? 
So Pat Forge's group through OCD did some community, community meetings, I guess over the course of the last couple of months. Uh, they've submitted the action plan to HUD, uh, and they're hoping in the next 30 or so days that they, that they get that. So if you guys remember, I think in the emergency supplemental that Congress approved after Hurricane Ida, it was about $1.2 billion in CDBG money. Some of that was automatically taken off the top for Southwest because they had kind of gotten left behind from, from Laura and Delta. Um, but we're going to see a substantial chunk of that. Um, both Terrell and LaFouche got a, got a huge chunk of hazard mitigation dollars a few months ago. I think Gordy got 80 because uh, they're a consolidated government. Uh, we got 50, and that's just the first blush. Uh, we're still sitting on probably about $4 million from Hurricane Zeta and hazard mitigation dollars, which for us is going to help provide a safe room uh, in South LaFouche so Wendell and Chet and, and the Sheriff's Office guys and if, if Mayor Carmonell comes up from Grand Isle again, they're not in a hospital when the roof blows off like they were for Hurricane Ida. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to plug in the, in the projects like that. But there's still a huge amount of money. And, and my hope, looking at what we're seeing now from, from Hurricane Ida, that a majority of that CDBG money will go into housing. Because uh, the one problem that we still face in Lafourche, and I know Gordy would say the same thing, is housing. You know, we have over 4,000 people still in some sort of temporary housing structure. Whether they're in the state's you know, travel trailers through their non-congregate sheltering, uh, or whether or not they're in FEMA trailers. And at some point, those programs are going to run out. Uh, and we're going to have to have some place to put these people. And when you look at you know, the apartment complexes in South Lafourche, City Place, and Lockport, which I know a lot of you drive past on 308, which is a public housing authority that, that the Housing Authority for Lafourche owns, you know, we're still, they're, they're just like us, right? They're still fighting to rebuild that stuff. So with you know, those, what is probably equivalent to 2,000 rooms is missing in, in, your in your neck of the woods, it puts a strain on your housing system. So I think you're going to see a huge push to build some affordable housing uh, through that program, which is still a couple of years away. Uh, and with inflation costs at 35, 40 percent, um, you're going to see those costs escalate in, unless something comes down. Um, so it's going to be a struggle the next few years when we figure out where to put these folks. Yeah, and, and to reiterate the same thing, I mean, an example for us is Bayou Towers had about uh, 350 people in it, 350 apartments, and uh, uh, that, that's, that's, we, we believe it's going to be completely uh, 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 torn down and, and redone. Of course, that's, we, we're working with HUD on that. That's why we don't have a definitive answer. And in Senator Circle, the same way, with another 200 houses that were destroyed. So we have 550 just in a housing program that we had to, uh, we had to go in with, with HUD and, and issue a Vouchers, well, vouchers are only as good as what you can find a place to stay. So that is one of the major problems here. They do have some FEMA parks that they built, and uh, but that's that's going to be definitely a, a sub, sub coming. Now, we do have companies like in Terrebonne and LaFouche, like DSLD. They have about 1,400 lots right now, so they're building houses. I know they're building probably more than that in LaFouche. And so housing, and then you have the independent contractors are building houses. So houses are going up. Chris Polanski and his group are getting permits out. And of course, we, we, we don't charge anything for doing a hurricane for permits unless it's new construction. The, uh, anything damaged is, is no charge for the permitting. You still have to get a permit, but there's no charge. But uh, through, through, like I said, these, these big firms coming in building houses, they're going to help a lot of uh, correct our problems because they are moving on with, like I said, about 1,400 houses. <laughs> and we're going to, I'm going to try to, we only have a few minutes left, talk about FEMA, flood insurance, risk 2.0 a little bit. But how many, how many permanent applications do you think you've had to process from Ida to both of you guys? If you have a clue, you might not. But. Well over 5,000. Yeah. So and that's everything big. from roofs to fences to, you know, complete reconstructions and, and remodel works. It's in so you guys are working with, with people who probably have their own damage, less of a workforce, processing 10, 15 times the amount of permits that you would have going on, which is pretty amazing. Um, that, that work, that you ride around town and you see where we are right now. So, uh, Okay, FEMA 2.0. A lot of people, you know, we talk about it. CDBG, we talk about hazard mitigation. Um, a lot of people don't understand what those things are, uh, but essentially those are disaster recovery efforts and efforts that the federal government lets you take in order to kind of flood proof yourself. Uh, and our parish has a history, both parishes have a history of using this from Gustav to do so many public works things. So I just wanted to point that out for people that may not. Uh, we're, we're starting to actually see FEMA risk rating 2.0. Uh, 
implemented here, uh, and it is a increase of our premiums uh, scaled up over time, and they kind of just hit you a little bit at a time, so you don't notice that they're, they're coming to steal your money. But uh, can you talk about that and, and the efforts you have underway to combat that? Yeah, you know, if you guys haven't paid attention to this yet, you know, I know you bankers and, and the insurance guys in the room have, but, but if you haven't, you, you need to wake up and, and wake up pretty damn quick. Um, you know, we, we've been screaming on this probably for about two years. Uh, Dwayne Bourgeois, who has, has done the circuit about this, um, is, is probably the foremost local expert when it, when it comes to this. But, you know, we started screaming about this because we knew the damning effects it was going to have. Um, and when we look at, especially in a post-hurricane world, when not only are your homeowner's insurance increasing, if you can even get it right now, uh, we're looking at probably a 63% increase for those of us that are that are Louisiana citizens customers now because they have to be 10% higher than the most expensive guy right off the, right off the bat. But you know we, we've tried for for probably since since April when this program rolled out to get the algorithm from FEMA to see how they're calculating flood insurance and, and they won't get it. No, they won't give it to us. And, and I was talking to Colin um, and, and hopefully he can try to get it from FEMA through a Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, because we want to know, and, and the little bit of information we have got from FEMA, you know, there's a whole multitude of factors. It's no longer where you are as a dot on a map and what your base flood elevation is, you know, how high your house is off, off of natural ground. It has to do with how close you are to the water, you know, what the wind speeds are like in your parish. There, there's a whole little model. But what they're, what they're doing is they're using a one-size-fits-all. They're, they're treating us like the Ohio Valley, right? They're thinking because we live close to Bayou Lafourche that the Bayou is going to overflow and it's, and it's going to flood. Right? And I keep trying to explain to them that, hey guys, when it rains, guess what we do? We call Ben and we say, Ben, turn off the pumps. And he cuts off the pumps and nods and guess what? The buy it doesn't overflow, right? But we can't seem to get FEMA to understand that. And I'll give you the prime example. Everybody knows I live in Lockport. I'm probably, I don't know, 100 yards off by Lafourche on the ridge. Never flooded, pretty firm house. Uh, I've been historically paying about $400 a year for, for flood insurance. My new premium, if you look on your, and, and look guys, you're gonna see that 18% a year, but look on your flood insurance declaration page, and you go all the way to the bottom, and you're gonna see that actuarial rate. That's where you're gonna end up in five years. So my actuarial rate is $4,600. And I'm not even in a flood zone. So for the guy who's seven blocks down from me, who's in a flood zone, his is gonna max out at 7,000. If he tries to sell a house today, he won't, because nobody is gonna realize, nobody's gonna pay the price he wants for that house and realize, in four or five years, he's got to pay $7,000 a year for flood insurance. Now, if you're building a new house right now, we've already talked about that. We have, I don't know, 600 new lots going up in Lafourche right now on the west side of Thibodeau. Everybody who buys that house, if they get flood insurance, is going to start out at the new rate. There's no 18% a year increase at that point. So those guys are seeing anywhere from two to $5,000 a year premiums for flood insurance. And, and FEMA at this point is basically telling us where we can live. That, that, that's what they're trying to do. They're saying, hey, you know, even though we have Port Fouchon, we have the Port of Terrebonne, and we supply the nation's oil and gas, and we supply the nation's seafood, and we supply sugar cane for the, or sugar for the world through our sugar cane farmers, you can't live down there because it's, it's too low. But yet the guy who has a, a $25 million condo in Miami is actually going to see a flood insurance rate decrease because he gets capped out at $12,000 because of the new program. It, it's asinine. And we've asked, uh, we've asked the FEMA administrator to pause it when she was at Terrebonne uh, after Hurricane uh, Ida. We've asked Secretary Mayorkas when he was here a few weeks ago to pause it. And they all look at us like we're stupid. Like, why would you want to stop this? This is, this is great. And we're, you know, they're trying to make the program more solvent. But what you're going to have happen is you're going to have people like me who have those preferred risk policies who really don't need flood insurance. You're going to see us drop out the program. Because we know if we flood, then half of, half of the food is underwater. So we're going to drop out the program. So you're going to see the program become more insolvent than you will solve it. And it just it doesn't make sense. Well, you know, in meeting with the head of, re of the region and with FEMA, you know, I asked him one question. Is this administratively mandated or is it congressionally mandated? He said administratively. I said, well, stop it. It's administratively. It's, it's, it's Congress. It's not congressionally mandated. It's them want to do it. And then another thing they're going to bring down on us is it's good. You, you're going to be reading about it freeboard. They want all homes built two foot above freeboard. And if you don't, and in fact, the, uh, the code council is voting today in Baton Rouge to allow for local governments make that decision. And what we said is, hey, look, somebody's got to make a decision. It should be the local government. But if you don't put a two point, oh, I mean, if you don't put a two foot freeboard, what happens? Right now, you're getting a 15 percent discount in Terrebonne. Uh, 
uh, on your on your flood insurance. It's, it's got under the consumer rating system, CRS. Well, you lose 10% of that if you don't mandate it. So your premiums will go up 10% if I don't come in and Archie don't come in and mandate the uh, two foot above freeboard, which you don't box a lot of home buyers out of qualifying. Now what we're doing, and I've talked to Archie about it, we're seeing if we can't use some of this federal money's coming in and, and try to supplement people building homes and see if we can't give them the money for the extra two feet. Right now we're talking to them and uh, I, you know, the money we got, like the 80 million I just got, the temple just got, you know, that's for, that's for mitigation, to mitigate against future damages, what more future damages than lifting a house. I mean, if you lift a house two feet, it's a better chance. So you're going to be seeing that coming along too, and you could lose, lose additional 10%. And all this is administratively. It's not legislatively done and forced to do it. So with the right people in Washington, D.C., we can cancel that. All right, guys. Well, I think we're out of time. Uh, I think it was a great discussion. Uh, I would like, on behalf of SCIA, to thank both of you for your leadership. Uh, I, this is always, I think, one of the favorite talks to come up here and talk about what's going on here locally. Uh, but we certainly hope and pray that we're spared from any storms this year, and uh, we look forward to seeing both of you back here next year. I think that's all we have. Next Thank year, you. sumo suits for me and Gordy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look, I think, I think these, these chat, I mean, we ought to have a show on television, you know? I mean, three handsome fellows like us mixing it up, you know?